Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to resurrect an old project for the last time. I'm done playing around. I'm done messing with modules that don't work. I'm sure that we aren't done blowing up MOSFETs, but that's old news. That's right. It's long past time that we get back to one of my favorite projects, the Plant Life Project. Wait, did I just get someone with that? Is someone about to be disappointed now? Man, I hope not. We're going to revisit the UPS project with an inverter miniseries. Why inverters? Well, because they're hard. We learned a lot in our previous two video series. Honestly, I feel like the UPS projects might make up a majority of the content we've released. Not sure how I feel about that. Thankfully, this series isn't going to be like that. It's not going to drag on forever, and here's why. I'm about to outline exactly why the previous projects weren't successful and what we're going to do, how we're going to lay out a new plan that will help us to avoid those same pitfalls. If I had to put my finger on one reason why the UPS projects weren't successful, I'd say that it comes down to that, unfortunately, I'm not an expert in UPS designs. I know a fair bit about power supplies and I'm competent in analog design, but I've never designed a UPS specifically. That means I've never designed an approximately sinusoidal power source meant to operate at 60 or 50 hertz. Now, that low frequency 60 hertz introduces a lot of design trade-offs with respect to any transformers because that means we need to decide between filtering a high frequency inverter signal and introducing a huge line frequency transformer. Now, switching at 60 hertz without filtering is also an option, and honestly that makes the whole design a lot easier, but, but let's get real. The output power quality just is not good enough at all. So let's just dismiss that architecture for a moment. All of them are present in commercially available UPS designs. The really tricky thing is figuring out why a designer might have selected one architecture over the other for a particular design. We need to explore all of these architectures at least enough through the lens of our project specific design goals to really zero in on why a designer might pick one or the other and ultimately center on what's the best architecture for us. Unfortunately, in the previous projects, we made some of those small decisions that made everything else a little bit harder. For our second attempt at making a UPS, I think we did a great job of scaling up the design to a higher power level, at least for the battery module. We did a great job of building a modular interface, so where did this fall apart? Why don't we just keep iterating daughter cards until the whole system worked? Well, the inverter, specifically the high voltage gate drive on that inverter module, Man, high voltage gate drive is tricky. The switching transients are huge. The opportunity for cross conduction as they were playing with snubbers. This really makes me wonder if having a line frequency transformer would have ultimately been better for our design. On top of that, I think switching at 100 kilohertz, which was our old switching frequency, was just too high. Quite simply, that is too high of a switching frequency for the voltages we're trying to work with. I don't think there is any design out there that switches 250 volts to DC at 100 kilohertz. Now maybe I'm wrong, but something on the order of 1 to 10 kilohertz seems a lot more reasonable. Sure, that made our filter inductor smaller, but it made our MOSFETs literally blow up. And I think that reducing the output power to keep the filter inductors reasonable will be a great design trade-off. And I think that'll make our design work a lot better. Also, we had filter induct Hers, but we only needed one filter inductor. That's right, we were so far off of what's required that we had an extra inductor cap combination. There was just a lot of, well, maybe a few face palm worthy design decisions, but I guess hindsight is 2020, right? We learned a lot in these projects and that's why we do them. So right there, we have a few different ideas to try. We have two different major paths because <laughs> because let's get real, I'm not building a hard switch modified sine wave output. I'm just not putting more of that into the world. There's enough of that already. So what should we do? Right, we should build up a bunch of UPS systems and spend a month of our time to explore each one. Right? Right? Oh, right. Of course not. That's not how engineering works. That's not how any of this works. We should and will build a dev kit instead of lighting $100 bills on fire. We're going to build a little inverter platform that will let us play around with different output filters and operating voltage. Ultimately, my hope is that this kit will help us to find a power level operating voltage and architecture that works best for this design. Our UPS design, that is. We're gonna use the inverter dev kit to find the best UPS design. So we're gonna make that inverter dev kit just like we did a while back, but there's a critical difference. 
We never tested that at high voltage, which I think was a huge miss. More on that later. Sweet. So all we have to do is build the dev kit that will allow for testing at high voltage, low voltage, with and without an output filter, with and without an output transformer, and we should be good to go, right? Yeah. If you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. I know I'm super excited to get this dev kit and just start playing around with sine waves again. Just want to throw out a special thanks to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step of supporting us directly. Coming up soon, we'll be walking through the DevKit PWM controller and the circuit design for this exploratory platform. I can't wait. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching it for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!